We've certainly seen a slew of new releases this year already from AMD, but this is their biggest one yet, literally. This is the biggest CPU packaging I've ever seen, and it houses an SSD-sized 16-core workstation powerhouse. It's safe to say that while Intel's roadmap has included both mainstream and enthusiast products for years now, AMD hasn't really embraced the division of its CPU line in this way. The closest thing we had to any kind of enthusiast class desktop CPU from AMD was probably Opteron, and that was really more of a server chip than anything else. Still though, even the last release in the Opteron line was over five years ago, and AMD has basically seeded the high-end desktop market to Intel since then. If Threadripper is the culmination of five years worth of engineering, then it appears to probably have been worth it. The 1950X is essentially two Ryzen 7 8 core dies on one enormous package. This means that not only do we get 16 cores of computing power, but thanks to SMT, that's 32 addressable threads. AMD is positioning Threadripper to compete against Intel's new X299 platform. And with their initial launch featuring a 12 core and a 16 core processor, they've leapfrogged Intel on core and thread counts for the time being at least. Intel's 7900X is currently the king of the hill and only sports 10 cores. But by the end of the year, Intel has promised chips ranging all the way up to 18. The arms race has begun, folks. I'm not sure how many of you are old enough or have been around long enough to remember, but in the 1990s, there was a similar situation only with clock speeds. This has come to be known as the megahertz myth, where Intel and AMD were trying to one-up each other by making their CPUs clock higher and higher without really addressing things like power draw or IPC. I hope we aren't entering into some kind of bizarro reverse megahertz myth where now they'll just be bombing away at higher and higher core counts without worrying about package size, process node, or efficiency. Without diving too far down that rabbit hole, let's just discuss what we have on hand today. The Threadripper 1950X has a base clock of 3.4 gigahertz, much higher than initially anticipated for a chip with this many cores. Intel has several Xeons with core counts this high that are clocked in the mid two gigahertz range. It also has the ability to boost up two cores to four gigahertz via XFR. Although as we'll see shortly, you could get much better results with manual overclocking of all cores. The huge IHS is in place to dissipate a projected heat output of 180 watts, which also makes sense as Ryzen 7 was rated at 95 watts, so doubling that number gets you right in the same ballpark. This is more heat that needs to be managed on Intel parts, so make sure you plan accordingly. Some custom coolers are being released with correspondingly large cold plates, so if you're building a new system from scratch, it might be worth looking into. If you're upgrading an existing system and already have an AIO that uses an Asetek OEM pump like the Corsair H110, NZXT Kraken, or Fractal Design Celsius, AMD has thoughtfully included in the box an adapter bracket that will allow you to mount directly onto the TR4 socket. Also in the box is a Torx screwdriver, which you'll need to actually install Threadripper. The socket design is such that it doesn't just flip open with a latch or a lever. You actually have to undo three separate screws and slide the CPU into place. The process is more complicated and takes a little bit more time and care than other installs you might be familiar with, but just follow the provided instructions and you should be just fine. One of the biggest changes between Ryzen 7 and Threadripper is the switch to an LGA configuration instead of a PGA. LGA, or Land Grid Array, has been in use by Intel for years and moves the pins from the bottom of the CPU to inside the motherboard socket. PGA, or Pin Grid Array, is what's still used on the mainstream Ryzen line and makes the processors far more prone to damage, as it's incredibly easy to bend the delicate pins. You still need to be careful with the pins on the motherboard, of course, but this approach makes much more sense overall. So we've got 16 cores and 32 threads on this Threadripper 1950X. What are we gonna do with it? Well, if you're buying this chip for gaming, you're doing it wrong. AMD has made great strides in single-threaded performance since their AM3 CPUs, but they're still not quite on par with Intel here. Additionally, there are many games that will simply not even run on a processor with this many cores, as they were not written to recognize the sheer number of threads. 
Game developers are working on this issue, but the fact remains that this is not a product made for gamers. This is a workstation CPU meant for heavy multi-threaded applications that will utilize workloads spread across all 16 cores. This means that 3D modeling, video editing, server applications, transcoding, and AI or other deep learning tasks are what Threadripper will be best at. As such, you're not going to see any slides comparing performance in Unigine Heaven or Gears of War. What I've done is completed testing on 10 different synthetic tests and productivity simulations, both at stock speeds and with the 1950X overclocked to 3.9 gigahertz on all cores. Hitting this frequency wasn't hard at all, as I was able to get there at just 1.3 volts and maintain the 3200 megahertz XMP profile on my kit of Crucial Ballistics Elite. I'm going to compare the results to my 7900X, which hits 4.6 gigahertz overclocked at 1.2 volts. I think you might find the results pretty interesting. See, when just looking at raw horsepower across all cores, Threadripper is a monster. Cinebench R15 is the perfect test for this as it utilizes every available ounce of CPU performance to render a scene. I never thought I'd actually be that entertained watching 32 little boxes zip around the screen as all the threads went to work. It also comes out on top in a number of other tests as we would probably expect. However, it does lose quite handily to the 7900X in single threaded tasks, as well as some other tests like Geekbench and my Adobe Premiere Render. It's for this reason that for the time being, I will be sticking with Intel as my primary workflow relies heavily on video editing and rendering in Premiere. I definitely wouldn't rule out switching to an AMD workstation in the future, however. With that being said, you can get a glimpse of the enormous potential that a chip like the Threadripper 1950X possesses. Once developers start to write applications with this type of processor in mind, it's likely that the gap will begin to widen between what you can do with Threadripper and what you can do with everything else. So that's my take on the Threadripper 1950X. What do you guys think of this new platform? Let me know down below in the comments. Also, don't forget to get subscribed to the channel if you are not already. Hit the little like button in the corner and I'll see you next time.